My name is Altnay Kaidarova, and I'm from King Abdullah University of Science and Technology, and, and I'm a PhD student over there. And today my talk is about flexible and multifunctional graphene sensor platform. So according to ID Tech research, the total market for printed and flexible electronics will grow from $31.6 billion in 2018 to $77.3 billion in 2029. So currently most of it is occupied by flexible displays, while printed and flexible sensors is on the second place uh, with $3.6 billion. The emerging areas of uh, sensing applications is wearable technologies, electronic skin, robotics, and even marine skin. All of them require thin and flexible sensor devices with simple integration on curved and non-planar surfaces. Graphene could be a good uh, material for such applications. It's a two-dimensional car carbon allotrope uh, with very high carrier mobility, low sheet carrier density, and high flexibility. It's actually four times stronger than a diamond, million times thinner than a paper, and more conductive than a copper. This is for high quality, one atom thickness graphene. And actually, according to Global Market Insights, 2018 was a disappointing year for investors looking forward to breakthroughs in cost-effective man mass manufacturing techniques. Indeed, the current graphene production involves multi-step chemical synthesis routes, such as in the chemical vapor deposition, reduction of graphene oxides, or mechanical liquid phase exfoliation. They also in involve high temperature and energy intensive processing, which altogether decrease widespread commercial potential of graphene. So laser-induced graphene was actually discovered in 2014 by Lynn et al. And they discovered graphene porous network from commercial polymers. They used, a, they used polymer film as a flexible insulating substrate and a porous conductive carbon structure, which was thermally uh, induced by CO2 laser. Laser-induced graphene is one-step fabrication process that doesn't involve any masks and uh, chemicals or treatments. Uh, it's a flexible and lightweight substrate. Uh, it's a low cost, which has potential for mass for, uh, production and manufacturing. There is a versatility in design, so we could fabricate sensors of any size and shape, uh, taking into consideration the resolution, which is limited by the spot size of the laser. And anti-fouling corrosion resistance have been recently reported in the literature. So laser-induced graphene actually does not have any biofouling in an aqueous environment. Uh, these properties have been already taken advantage in different devices, such as acoustic devices, but, uh, for artificial throat and uh, earphones, biosensors for, uh, that involve surface functionalization, photodetectors that involves uh, photosynthesized material integration, energy storage devices with electro deposition, and electrocatalyst with a heteroatom doping. Here we report laser-induced graphene sensor platform with uh, four different sensors. First is a salinity sensor, then force flow and detection sensor, deflection sensor, pressure sensor, and the hole sensor, all of which are tried to be integrated on the single platform. So oh, the sensors are based on commercial PI film, uh, 1. 125 micrometers thickness, and porous carbon network, which is around usually 400 micrometers. Uh, Raman spectroscopy shows three distinct peaks, a prominent G peak, which is related to vibrational of sp2 carbon atoms, D peak, uh, which is activated by the defects, and 2D peak, uh, which is the main one in monolayer graphene, um, the weight percentage of a temperature shows that uh, actually captain survives the temperature up to around 500 uh, Celsius degrees, which has a promise in uh, high temperature applications. So the first sensor is the conductivity cell. Uh, here it is formed by immersing electrodes into the saline solution. Uh, electrical conduction is proportional to the ions and it's also proportional to concentration of the salt. And we model the uh, conductivity cell using a Randall's equivalent circuit. 
So we have used a two electrode and four electrode cells. Two electrode cells is usually depend on electrical double layer uh, and polarization, while two for two four electrode cells we use two outer electrodes to drive AC current and two inner electrodes to measure the voltage drop across the water. So we have measured different salinity solutions for four, four electrode conductivity cell by um, adding um, natrium fluoride to DI water, starting from very fresh water to the very saline water up to 50 PSU, which is practical salinity unit. Before actually testing in a, such a saline water, we have immersed um, gold electrodes uh, to the saline water and, and compared with laser induced graphene electrodes. Actually, gold electrodes have been heavily damaged after one measurement, so we couldn't even um, characterize them properly, while laser induced graphene have showed excellent stability and durability. So conductance of the laser induced graphene conductivity cell was frequency independent um, from 10 kilohertz to 100 kilohertz, uh, with values dependent only on the salinity with a linear trend. So there was a linear response to salinity with high sensitivity around 0.85 millisiemens per PSU. And uh, it's actually operating in a low frequency range, uh, which actually simplifies the circuit design for the tags. Since we want to use such a sensors in a actually Red Sea or saline environment, we have tested them in the um, harsh environment of Red Sea. And we noticed that after seven weeks, the conductance have decreased by 17%, while the area covered, covered by biofouling was around 22%. So this is not, this is not good solution for the long-term measurements. So we discovered that two electrode conductivity cell actually can uh, resolve this issue. It can operate in a high frequency range so around one megahertz, we can see a, a clear trend. And after three weeks in the Red Sea, there was no redu um, reduction in the impedance of the uh, sensors. And uh, this was explained by that biofiling layer acts as a capacitance that is short-circuited, short which can be seen in a Randall's equivalent circuit, which also includes different parasitic components, so two electrode conductivity, conductivity cell is suggested to solve long-term biofouling issues. The next sensor is the force and flow and deflection sensor. It's based on piezo-resistive properties of laser-induced graphene. It has gauge factor of around 1.16, Young model is around 2.1 gigapascal, and piezo-resistive co uh, coefficient around 0.84. So resistance increase here under the tension and decrease under the compression. The external force actually induces the uniaxial stress, which varies linearly across the thickness in the longitudinal uh, axis. And force on the tip of the cantilever also induces the bending and fractional resistance change. We have tried to print the same electrode on the same size, exactly the same electrode, and discovered that this incre increased the homogeneous bidirectional response of the sensor and actually provide full temperature compensation by using different difference measurements, where we subtract the measurements of one side from another. We have also tried to characterize the sensor by in the flow setup, where we have uh, induced different flow measurements in uh, here you can see the resistance change over speed from 0 0.5 uh, meter per second to 3 meter per second. So before applying this sensors on uh, different animals and people, we have tried to do a biocompatibility assessment. For this, we have tried to do cytotoxicity measurements, to, um, which is a quality of being toxic to the cell. Uh, we have tested cells called HCT116 and characterized it using colorimetric assay for cell viability and confocal microscopic uh, test, which is live dead fluorescence um, staining test. And actually results suggest that availability of the cells grow on top of the sensor after 24 hours. 
So first of all, we have tried uh, to test it on a dolphin by uh, measuring underwater animal speed monitoring applications. Uh, here you can see the dolphin, and we have uh, integrated the sensor with the aquatic tag, which actually was uh, in collaboration with Swansea University, uh, Professor Rory Wilson. Here the dolphin was um, uh, swimming on the surface, medium diving, deep diving, and we can uh, calibrate it and find out the speed. Also we have tried to with the turtles, and we have found out the speed of the turtle and when it comes out to the surface to breathe. Here there is a short videos. The dolphin actually in the, uh, was trained by the uh, trainer. We have videoed and actually um, recording the whole session. The next one was the human joint bending for motion tracking. This is the monitoring the response of the finger bending, such as the slow bending and fast bending. Uh, knee related motion monitoring for walk, such as walking, jogging, and squatting. And micro slip detection, which is also referred to as a hypnagogic jerk, by monitoring head nodding and waking up, which is very important when people fall asleep in the, in the car and suddenly wake up. So we can uh, monitor this uh, millisecond uh, movement using, using the uh, force and flow deflection sensor. The next sensor is a pressure sensor. It's also a piezo resistive sensor. Uh, here, geometric parameters were optimized for high sensitivity. The distance between interlayers actually decreased, uh, while, while contact area increased, which induces internal resistance to decrease. We have coated with PMMA coating to prevent from biofouling and uh, shunt currents in the seawater, uh, and enhance its endurance in seawater. Here we have characterized in a very wide range of pressure detection in a special pressure chamber, um, chamber which is goes up to 20.3 megapascals, which corresponds to around two kilometers down in the sea. The limit, the limit of detection is around 20 pascal, which is quite low, and uh, operation stability under different loads can be also seen such as 70 kilopascal, uh, 200 kipo, kilopascal. It's quite stable and uh, reliable. Uh, pressure sensors were used for detection of poles and heartbeat monitoring. Here you can see a distinct two peaks of, from the artery. Uh, we have also used the same sensor attached to different parts of the um, foot for plantar measure, pressure measurements and try to characterize the pressure on each part of the foot. This could be in future use for the gait analysis. We have also used it for touch sensing, where, um, where it can clearly uh, identify different touches, such as soft press, hard press, just a touch, and uh, actually it can induce the um, uh, light bulb to shine. The last one is a whole magnetic sensor. It was recently discovered. All the sensors have a linear relationship, uh, uh, whole voltage with magnetic field, with a sensitivity around 1.2 volts per ampere Tesla. We have tested uh, by bending uh, the sensor for different uh, radiuses. So there was no degradation after bending to a minimum radius of five millimeters, which is also around, and, uh, and after the uh, thousand cycles to five millimeters using a pool tester. We have also um, tried to characterize the noise, and voltage noise density shows no dependence in the frequency range uh, from two hertz to 13 hertz. Noise is independent on current bias level, and noise voltage flow of the sensor was as low as 50 nanovolts per square hertz, which is comparable to the high quality graphene whole sensors. So in conclusion, laser-induced graphene sensors are mechanically flexible, lightweight, corrosion resistant, and has low uh, cytotoxicity. The single step is a key feature here, which involves prototyping and mass fabrication. Tuning the geometry of the sensors induces various sensitivities, dynamic ranges, or sizes, and laser-induced graphene sensors can operate under harsh environment conditions. Thank you very much.